All right, this is lesson 4.4 in pre-calculus 11. We're analyzing quadratic functions in the form, I'm just gonna circle it here, y equals a x minus p all squared plus q. Now, sometimes people call this, the book calls this standard form, but um, in other countries, other books, they call this vertex form. And we'll see why we call it vertex form in a second. It's because you can read the vertex where the vertex is on the graph directly from this form. I'm just gonna do a quick little review of terms here. The vertex of a parabola or a quadratic function is either the max or the min point of that parabola. So I'm just pointing to the vertex here and here. So in this standard form equation, we're gonna be able to read off where the vertex is. That's why this equation is so powerful and why we use it so often when we're graphing parabolas is because the vertex is often a point that we want to know. Okay, um, I'm gonna skip ahead here a little bit and just go to the next page. Now here we see the results of lesson 4.3. So in 4.3, we looked at what happens to our, gra our parabola when we add or subtract or multiply the equation by certain numbers. I encourage you to go back and watch that lesson if you haven't already. Um, but we're gonna go straight to the summary on the next page here, okay? So this is at the bottom of page 298. And this just summarizes what standard form equation looks like. Okay, so I'm just gonna zoom in here. Here we go, okay. So standard form is what the textbook calls it, but again, it might be called vertex form if you're using another resource. Okay, and here it is. And the advantage of this format is you can tell a few things. So first thing you can tell is where the vertex is. Now the vertex is gonna be at PQ. So the coordinate, the x coordinate of the vertex and the y coordinate of the vertex are sitting right in the equation. I always like to remember that the x coordinate is sitting right next to the x. So that's how a good way to remember it. So the vertex is at PQ. Okay. Um, one thing to note is we have a negative sign in front of the P, so the you do have to flip the sign of that number. I'll show you an example in just a moment. Okay, so we do know where the vertex is, so it's here at PQ. The other thing we can tell is the direction of the opening and how steep the graph will be. So this is the same A value that's in the general form equation. If that A value is negative, then our parabola is gonna be like a sad face, it's gonna be facing downwards. And if that A value is positive, our parabola will be facing upwards. If that A value is large, we're gonna have a really steep parabola. If that A value is small and close to zero, we're gonna have kind of a shallower, more compressed par parabola. Um, so we can see the two examples here. When A is positive, we have kind of an upward facing parabola. If A is negative or less than zero, we have a downward facing parabola. Okay, so that's the information we can get directly from the function. And so we're just gonna do two examples now. One where we're practicing going from the graph to an equation, and then the second example, we're gonna be going from the equation to the graph. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this question. It says, determine the equation of this graph. Okay, so let's write out our standard form equation. It's y equals a x minus p all squared plus q. Now, first thing we have here when I look at this graph is I notice the vertex is right here at four for the x coordinate and the y coordinate is negative two, halfway between zero and negative four on the y axis there. So those are the values that I'm gonna go ahead and put into where P and Q are in the equation format. Let's go ahead and do that. So I have Y equals A X minus four all squared. Oops, I could do plus negative two, but it's a little bit cleaner just to write minus two. So I went ahead and plugged in those vertex coordinates into the equation. Now what I'm missing next is A. So what we can do, and A is kind of the steepness. We do know A is gonna be negative because this graph is facing downwards, and it describes the steepness of the graph. So to get 
how to get a value for a what we're going to do need to do is plug in another point so we can pick any point on the graph i'm going to just pick this one arbitrarily but you could have picked this one too it doesn't matter you get the same answer in the end that point there has an x coordinate of 6 and a y coordinate of negative 14. so i'm going to go ahead and replace the y and the x in that equation with 6 and negative 14 and then I'm going to go ahead and solve for that a value because by plugging in that coordinate it'll tell me how steep my graph is given that given where the vertex is okay so I'm going to go ahead and replace the y with negative 14 and the x with 6 I'm going to now solve for a which I'm highlighting in green so first thing I'm going to do is just evaluate this bracket here just to clean this up a little bit. So I'll have negative 14 equals a times, so six minus four all squared would be four. Okay, and now I'm gonna isolate for a just by doing some opposite operations. So I'm gonna add two to both sides. It's gonna cancel it out on the right-hand side and now I'll have negative 12 equals a times four and I'm gonna divide by four. So I'll have negative three equals a. Okay, now I can write my final answer, final equation. I'm just gonna go ahead here. Uh, it's gonna be y equals negative three x minus four squared minus two. So again, the vertex went here and where I'm highlighting in pink, and then the a value I calculated using that algebra step went right in here. And it makes sense that the a is negative because I do have a downward facing parabola there. Okay, so that's that example. So that's how to go from a uh, graph to the vertex form or the standard form equation. Let's go ahead and skip ahead to the next example. So this, this example, we are graphing so we're going from an equation to a graph. We're just gonna sketch the graph. We're not gonna do it in detail just because I don't have a coordinate grid, but we're gonna find, and then we're gonna identify all of these things here on the right-hand side. Now, because I don't have a ton of space, I'm gonna go ahead and use the space I have above to do this question. So I'm just gonna rewrite the equation up here. Y equals, and it was 1 fourth, right? Yeah, 1 fourth x minus 3 plus 1. 1 fourth x minus 3 all squared plus 1. I'm just going to double check that I got that right. 1 fourth x minus 3 plus 1. Perfect. Okay, so let's go ahead and identify some things right off the bat before we start sketching the graph. For the graph, I'm going to sketch it right over here in a minute. Um, and this is going to be my x and this is gonna be my y, but I will do that in a second once I have more information. Okay, so right off the bat, I can directly read off my vertex. So the vertex is at negative three, positive one. Oh, sorry, not negative three, positive three. Positive three, positive one. Um, remember, we use the opposite sign for the x coordinate. So because it says x minus three, it's actually three. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and plot that on the graph. So I'm gonna go here, one, two, three, one. I'm gonna plot the point here, there's my vertex. Vertex at three comma one. Okay, uh, let's write the axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry is going to be the line, the vertical line for which, where this is symmetric. So because uh, it's a parabola, it's going to be, and it's going to be upward facing, we're going to have symmetry at x equals 3 here. So the axis of symmetry will be x equals 3. I will label that as well, x equals 3, the line of symmetry or the axis of symmetry. For our domain and range, So the domain is going to be all real numbers. It's always all real numbers unless you have like a word problem that you're doing. Our range, let's look at the direction this parabola is facing. So 
Because the a value here is one fourth, it's a positive number, that means my parabola will be facing upwards. So I will have an upwards facing parabola I'm gonna draw it in. It's a pretty shallow parabola because one fourth is pretty close to zero, it's less than one, so it is compressed a little bit. Um, so my range is gonna be all the y values are one or greater than one, so we say y is greater than or equal to one for the entire graph. And we saw that from looking at that a value and the vertex. Okay, and then the intercepts, the x-intercepts, because this entire graph is above the x-axis, there are none. For the y-intercepts, we can't see them directly from this equation format. That's one downside to the standard form equation is you can't easily tell what the intercepts are. Um, but what you can do is plug in x equals zero into the equation and you can calculate what the y-intercept will be. So here we'll plug in, because at the y-intercept the x is actually equal to zero, minus three squared plus one. So this is, um, 9 divided by 4, which is 2.25 plus 1, which is 3.25. So the y-intercept is 3.25. So we could label that on our graph. We could just put a little arrow here, y-intercept at 3.25, okay? And that's about it. That's all the information we can get. We've got the opening, we've got a sketch, we've got our domain, our range. Um, I didn't put the answer here, 3.25. There we go. Um, so that's how you draw the graph. Now on a quiz or a test, I would always give you a coordinate grid to draw your graph more accurately and you can make a table of values. Um, but here we just made a sketch because we didn't have that coordinate grid given to us in the workbook. Okay, let's go into the last example, which is a word problem. We're going to skip example three, actually. We'll just go right to example four. Now, in this example, we are modeling a real life object using a parabola and putting it onto a coordinate grid um, and making an equation for it. Okay, so you could pause the video here and read the example yourself, or you could read it along with me. It says a cable that supports a suspension bridge is parabolic. That means it has a parabola shape to it. The horizontal distance between the ends of the cable is 140. So this distance here is 140. The midpoint of the cable is 14 meters below each end. Okay, determine an equation that models the cable. So first thing you always wanna do when you're doing this is set up a coordinate grid for yourself. Um, so I'm gonna draw one here. I'm gonna draw it pretty long. Okay. And we want to put this in a spot that kind of makes sense. Okay, so I usually try and start my object, maybe like it's, if it's a bridge or whatever, start it like kind of near the origin. Where, um, so I'm only using positive numbers. Okay, uh, so I'm going to draw my bridge. So if this is the origin, 0, 0 here, 0 for x, 0 for y, I'm going to draw my bridge like this. Okay, so I'm going to have these two points here. So now this point here, I know this is 14. So this point here, the coordinates would be zero for X and 14 for Y. And we, <coughs> excuse me, we know the cable is 140 meters all the way across. So this point here would be at 140 for X and 14 for Y. Um, and we would have the axis of symmetry. I didn't draw the best parabola there, but that's okay right in the middle, halfway between zero and 140. So our vertex would be at 70, uh, zero. Okay, so now we know where our vertex is. Let's plot, put that into our equation. And now this is actually just like equation one again. Uh, I'm just gonna complete this here by putting X and Y. There we go. So our vertex we can put into the equation. It would be a X minus 70 squared plus zero. So there's the x coordinate, there's the y coordinate. Now we don't have to write the plus zero, so I'm gonna actually erase it because it's just gonna make it more complicated if I keep it in there. And now we take either point, doesn't matter which one, I'm gonna just pick this one arbitrarily. 
um, and I'm going to plug that x and that y value into the graph in order to determine a. So the x will be replaced with 140 and the y will be replaced with 14. So we're going to have 14 equals a times 140 minus 70 squared. Okay, let's evaluate that bracket there. 14 equals a times, so just in the calculator, I'm going to type in 140 minus 70 squared. I should be able to do that in my head, but that's okay. 4,900, and I'm going to divide by 4,900. Now you could write this final answer as a fraction, or you could write it as a decimal. It doesn't matter, but the decimal is a little bit awkward. It's like a longer repeating decimal, so I would recommend writing it as a fraction. If you reduce 14 over 4,900, I believe it's 1 over 350. Yeah, it is. So our final equation is y equals 1 over 350 times x minus 70 all squared. So that is an equation that models that bridge. We got the 150 from here, or sorry, 1 over 350 from there, and we got the 70 from the vertex. And remember, we're adding zero on there, but we didn't include that because it just makes it look simpler this way. Okay, that's the end of the lesson.